I loved baseball, but yearned to play in America. I would look across the water and dream about the great time they must be having there. I bet it's not so great. But a lot of big people went to that island. But fortunately, I was not one of them. So if you were able to, you would be... Yeah, I'd certainly take a look at it. A lot of people are very interested in footage of UFOs. So a lot of people want to know, will you help push the Pentagon to release more footage, which a lot of people claim is available? I would do that. I'd love to do that. I have to do that. Dang it, I'm at the wrong country. What's wrong, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering M. The Donald Trump Lex Friedman uh, podcast just aired. It was about 40-ish minutes of Donald Trump and Lex Freeman going back and forth on some interesting topics. Some uh, were interesting, some were kind of more of the same. But it's interesting to see, whereas, you know, the Theo Vaughn interview, the comments were overwhelmingly positive. The Lex Friedman comment section is a little more negative. Now, it's still... At this point, you know, nearly 300,000 views in just two hours and at 44,000 upvotes to just 3.4 thousand downvotes. So it's interesting because I think given Theo's connection with the UFC and kind of some of his more um, anti-cancel culture positions, I think his audience was a little more open to Trump, whereas Lex Friedman's audience a lot of it was positive because I think people who like Trump wanted to watch the interview and they left a like on it. But there's also a lot of uh, NPC screeching in the comments as well. The media is already picking every little thing that they possibly can to try and, you know, negatively impact Donald Trump. I've seen, I've watched the whole thing. I'm not going to just sit here and play the entire thing for you. I think, you know, that would be terrible. You should watch it on Lex's channel. But in the 45 minutes that he talked, I mean, they talked about the psychology of winning and losing. Meh. Politics being a dirty game. Already knew that. Business versus politics. Mm, that was interesting. The war in Ukraine uh, at eight, the eight minute mark, I think was really good. Trump stuck with basically his bog standard talking points. Uh, you know, it would never have happened under me. I'm going to end it um, when pressed about. You know, how would you end it? He said, well, if I tell you that, then maybe it won't work. And there's probably some truth to that. Probably Kamala Harris would just steal it anyway. Um, they talked briefly about the Kamala Harris interview on CNN being a disaster. Their Trump-Harris debate, which, you know, everyone knows. Everyone can see that Kamala Harris is already trying to wiggle out of it. They talked about China, which was interesting. The 2020 election, he did mention in here, maybe for the first time ever, he said, we lost by a whisker. Um, he then did go on when pressed during on the 2020 election question, um, whether, he not, whether or not he thought it was fair, whether or not he thought it was stolen, this kinds of things like that. He basically kept his same standard answer. I thought it was interesting. I think that might have been the first time a lot of people heard him refer to it as losing. However, he did stick to, you know, there were a lot of shenanigans, which it, hopefully we're seeing a lot of states enact various um, uh, legis pieces of legislation to pre prevent that. One of the most powerful parts, I thought, was this section oh. here. Let me ask you about Project 2025. So you've publicly said that you don't have any direct connection to Project Nothing. I know nothing about it. And the, the reason this section was really important, there were some big wins here. The there's, a, there's some lot of thuds. I think overall the Theo Vaughn interview was better, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> I suppose maybe it's just the style of it all, but the project 2025 thing, which is something that I, that I think doesn't really, maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think it really resonates with liberals, uh, or anybody because most people don't know what it is. I think the entire thing is 900 pages long or something, something crazy that somebody told me. Um, but it's like, you know, Kamala Harris, the entire DNC, they even said that Donald Trump at the DNC said he wrote it, which of course he didn't. Um, so I thought it was great to get on like this neutral platform, and be like, uh, I don't, I don't have anything to do with it. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, I thought that was a big win. Um, his position on um, you put on the wacky tobacco. I know <clears throat> there are a lot of hardliners against it, but I actually thought Trump's answer was pretty good here. He talked about 
hey, we're you know you got to legalize it, but you got to be careful about it. You can't have the whole city being smell smelling like herb, all this kind of stuff. These are things that I agree with, um, and I think most you know middle of the road people agree with. He then did address the Joe Rogan thing, which he did seem to back off and then say that he would go on his show. Safe way. Speaking of marijuana, let me ask you about my good friend, Joe Rogan. So you had a bit of tension with him. So when he said nice things about RFK Jr., I think you've, uh, you've said some not so nice things about Joe. And I think that was a bit unfair. And as a fan of Joe, I would love to see you do his podcast because he is legit the greatest conversationalist in the world. So yeah. what's, what's the story behind well, the tension? I don't think there was any tension. He kind of does walk back. I mean, Trump was just being Trump in that moment. I don't think anyone's looking for an apology here. But I think the most important thing here is that he does say that he would go on Joe Rogan's show. And uh, I've always liked him, but I don't know him. I mean, I only see him when I walk into the arena with Dana mm -hmm. and I shake his hand. I see him there and... I think he's good at what he does, but I don't know about doing his podcast. I mean, I guess I'd do it, but I haven't been asked, and I'm not asking them, you know? I'm not asking anybody. It sounds like a challenging negotiation situation. No, it's, it's, not, it's not really a negotiation. And he's sort of a liberal guy, I guess. I mean, <clears throat> this is just the art of the deal here, obviously. Um, there is no question at all that... Donald Trump should do Joe Rogan's podcast. He said he'll do it. Now, Joe Rogan specifically has said that he will not have Trump on his show because he does not want to help him. But I do think that's kind of a cop out. I think that he should have him on and he should have him on to, uh, and he should offer Kamala to be on too. I mean, nobody disagrees with, I mean, I want Trump to be on, but I want Kamala to be on more. I know what Trump's going to say, all right? Kamala, the more she talks, the more people hate her. Um, and, you know, he does, <clears throat> Trump does have a couple of like, hey, I prefer to look forward, but, yeah, let's look back and let's go back and talk about this. That's just classic Trumpisms that I've come to just kind of, that's just who he is. Another important, important thing he talked about was Mr. Jeffrey and the list and whether or not he was going to, uh, he asked him, you know, he was asked by Lex Friedman, hey, how did you um, get to the point where, uh, how do you think he got as intertwined with people as he did? He referred to him as a good salesman. So, of course, the media is trying to say, uh, oh, well, Trump was giving him a compliment. No, he was just saying, you know, he was good. He was a good schmoozer. He was a good salesperson. That's how he... Um, you know, that's how he got where he was. He was also offering a lot of, uh, you know, probably a lot of, uh, you know, young uh, bedroom activities for the creepazoids. Uh, but most importantly, he said he will, he alluded to the fact that he will be um, declassifying or he would be open to declassifying those files, which I think. If you thought Trump's life was a danger before, I mean, he said Trump teases releasing the Jeffrey Files in second term, a lot of big people went to that island. And again, just like the left has always tried to um, say, you know, Trump's never been there. He said he wasn't there. I suspect if they could prove he was there, they were already would have done that. Uh, he clarified he has no problem with releasing the files. If he can, I'd be inclined to do that. I have no problem with it. Absolutely based uh, he talks about, you know, how religion helps provide people with morality and then they kind of wrap it up overall. It was a pretty boring interview in my opinion. Um, but I thought Trump did do some good things, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, addressing some of the things that have been held against him. If there are people now, Lex Friedman does say at one point, Hey, you've said, you know, there's in here, this part, tough topic, but important. He said, lost by a whisker. Uh, I'm an independent. I have a lot of friends who are independent, many of whom like your policies, uh, like the fact that you're a deal maker, like the fact that you can end wars, but they are 
troubled by uh, what happened in the 2020 election and uh, statements about widespread fraud and this kind of stuff, fake elector scheme. What can you say to those uh, independent? And here, I, th I, I mean, I thought he could have done a little more politicking. Um, <clears throat> I know that hardcore Trumpers will say, no, he did it. But he did basically just say, no, no, it was, you know, it was corrupt and this and the other things. There are many things that we know of, you know, that were a lot of shenanigans going on. And um, I think that uh, I don't believe that there are that many independent voters that are just waiting on him to be like, oh, yeah, everything was hunky dory during 2020. I don't think that voter exists in any real number. I, I just don't you know, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If we, you know, again, he could have soft shooted a little bit instead of going directly into the like, you know, it was rigged and all this kind of stuff. But overall, you know, if I refresh this, what is that? 40, then a big number in Hillary. 47,000 up votes to so 4,000 down. That's a big positive, you know, 100 to 1 like to dislike ratio. Get Kamala, both sides of the coin. Yeah, I agree. Kamala should be on here. It should be required for presidential candidates to do long form interviews. Lex breaking the internet. Trump's doing a lot of interviews with people I've never heard of. I think it's awesome. <laughs> You've never heard of Lex Friedman, okay? Um, this is the this is the Trump bump, though. I mean, look what happened to Theo Vaughn when he in, in, interviewed Trump. He gained he had thirty million views that month, and he gained sixty one hundred forty thousand subscribers. And then 40,000 the following month. I mean, he's been growing massively. He grows on his own. He didn't need Trump, but there's obviously a huge bump there. Um, you know, a lot of these people, thank you for your voice. Imagine everyone in Congress. He's low key daring Mark Cuban to run. Trump is one step away from sitting down with Rogan. It'll never happen. Rogan has said he only interviews people at his studio. Trump refuses to do this because he only does interviews on his own properties to remain the power dynamic. That's simply not true. Um, I think that Donald Trump absolutely could go to Joe Rogan's studio. I think for the size of the audience, I think he would he would be open to that. Um, it's probably, you know, maybe some security reasons also. Uh, but, you know, man, politicians are really great at not answering questions and talking about something completely different. You know, again, um, tr Trump had some classic Trump Trumpisms, you know, um, People didn't like that he didn't answer questions directly, but welcome to politics. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, asking Trump about weed and UFOs. Joe Rogan must be proud. Uh, there were people that were obviously like, Lex is doing nothing in this conversation. Him being here is just a detriment as a detrimental as a fly in the wall. The video is just regular Trump rally speech. Shame. Um, you know, never answered a single question. Um, there's a lot of people you know, in the, in the replies that are kind of butthurt, he literally can't give a straight answer, ask a question, listen to the answer, ask another completely different pre-prepared question. Literally every other Lex Friedman interview is free flowing conversations, digging into answers. So everyone's mad that he didn't press him enough. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, um, I, you'd have to check, you know, the clips. If you look at, you know, the way Twitter's replying to it you know it is obviously trending because you know it's lex friedman and and uh donald trump but a lot of people say you know trump told friedman he's going to release a client list trump goes off on lex friedman when he says kamala isn't a communist i don't know that there'll be another election and it's going to be a communist country or close and there's a lot of people listening to this myself so he included back. that doesn't think that Kamala is a communist. Uh, well, she's a Marxist. Her her father's a Marxist. That's right. And she's advocating. It's a little for unusual. Some, you know. She's advocating for some policies that are towards the direction of um, democratic socialism, let's say. But there's a lot of people that kind of know the way government works and they say, well, none of those policies are going to actually come to reality. It's just being used during the campaign to. You know, yeah, but you can't uh, vote. For, you can't vote for somebody thinking that their policies aren't going to work. You know what I mean? Um, you know, UFO footage, Jeffrey List. This is all good to me. Um, overall, I'd say it was probably a C plus. But 
I think Lex Friedman's podcast probably has a lot of independent voters. So hopefully some of them were swayed. Um, hopefully, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hope you enjoyed this video. Congrats, Lex, on this get. We'll talk to you again real soon.